we just knew that I was going nuts and I was like living in the bathroom basically. I'd had to like move back in with my parents for a little bit because I had just moved back to Colorado. And so my parents, I mean, so my parents didn't really know what, what was going on. I was just basically living in this bathroom. And I moved all my stuff in there, dude. And I just shut myself up and just like lived there for like three, three months. And I was just slowly going insane because that's what it does. It like eats at you. And it just starts telling you, like, it starts out at first like small stuff, you know, like, it doesn't just come right out and say you suck. It just starts like gnawing gently, you know, like, well, the reason that David doesn't hang out with you is because David actually doesn't like you. <laughs> Um, you know, you're like, really? I've never thought of it before. It's not like it's an actual voice, but this is how it makes you think, you know what I mean? And you're like, oh, I hadn't thought that David didn't like me. It's like, yeah, David doesn't like you. And do you know why David doesn't like you? Because this, 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 and this. And then before you know it, you're just totally, over the months, you know, it just, like, wears you down to the point where you do actually start thinking that you're shit. You start believing it. Because, like, if you have a couch in a room, and that couch is blue, if you take someone and you, you know, tell them enough times that couch is red at a certain point, they just might see the couch as being red. You know what I mean? Like that's like just basically if you just it's just you hear it so frequently finally that it's like okay the couch is red. You know, fine, I actually suck, you know. So so it just snapped and I started acting erratically and um and I thought my parents hated me and, and all my friends hated me and which is probably true, but anyway, because I haven't gotten any better. See, there you go. <laughs> I've gotten no better. And um and so I just snapped and I had a, like a psychotic episode and I um grabbed a steak knife out of the kitchen during a fight with my dad and just like slashed at my arm and my mom who's like this tiny little lady is like suddenly she just like grabbed me and she just like like ground me into the floor she just like tackled the shit out of me but I did like actually rip it up pretty bad and there was like fat sticking out and it was gross and um yeah it was really nasty and so I got locked up yeah, that was 36 stitches and I remember when the doctor was giving me the shot in the arm to numb it and I was like oh and he was he was kind of a dick he was like oh it didn't seem to hurt when you did it Jesus. No, dude, fuck you, honestly, you know? Seriously. Yeah, I was like, seriously, and then, I don't know why that bugged me, but it did, and then, um, yeah, so that was 36 stitches, and then, um, I got locked up for three days, and that's when I started realizing that something was seriously wrong, and so they diagnosed me with, uh, major clinical depression when I was in there, and, because I didn't used to have this, I, it, I started this at, like, 27, and we're not going to talk about how I am now. How are you here with me right now? I think... That's a good question because <laughs> yeah they, why right yeah, because they had this thing where they um in when you know when you're locked up for those three days which is mandatory and you're not getting out um they had this they have these projects that, that you do which seem like projects for like five-year-olds but um it actually works and they had the paper plate project and the paper plate is like um you know on one side you're you're supposed to write all the things you like about yourself which is really funny because on, on, on the one side I was like songwriter <laughs> Like that was it, dude. That was like my only thing. I was like, I write, I write lyrics and I write songs. That's, That's like it. On the other side, you're supposed to say everything you would hate about yourself. And needless to say, that whole side was like full of like little words. I'm ugly. You know, I have no friends. I'm dorky. I'm like whatever. Anything you can think of, I guarantee you I said it. And then I think that's what made me realize that that was how badly it had like torn me down, and it still tears me down. Tell me about uh, Sawyer. Okay, so Sawyer is a song, it's funny, most of my songs take like months to write because the lyrics have to be just so and everything has to be just so. And I remember I wrote Sawyer in a half an hour, like for the idea of it. And the idea of it is that um, basically um, you're like in your house, you know, and you have depression and then this like little kid comes up, you know, or a guy or whatever, and, and it's Tom Sawyer. And you're like, oh, it's Tom Sawyer because Tom Sawyer is so harmless, you know. Anyone would go with Tom Sawyer. So you just go and you follow Tom Sawyer because he's going to play swords with you and he's going to play like, you know, finding pirate treasure and all this fun shit, you know. <laughs> and so you're off, you know, so I'm following him and it stuff gets darker and darker and he's trying to lead me down to the river and basically, long story short, Sawyer isn't Tom Sawyer at all. It's depression and it's luring me to my death. Okay. So when I... How's it end? How it ends is basically, well, it's more in the chorus. He, he, uh, well, it ends with my arm being looking at me. Okay. Like, and he's trying to kill me, so he's stabbing me in the arm. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the point of it being that, first thing is that Sawyer, like the chorus says, you know, he murmurs back to me, none of this is real, none of this is happening, because it isolates you and it keeps you from, so how it ends basically is, yeah, him trying to kill me. But that song helped me a lot, because once you can see it as a villain, and see it as a separate villain, separate from yourself, like actually as a person, I mean, and it's not, I don't really see, I don't see like a little guy walking around the audience. <laughs> this is a metaphor, okay, I want to stress this right now, songwriting metaphor, okay? <laughs> I'm not that fucking whack, but anyway. <laughs> No, but once you can see it 
as a you know as a person who's trying to kill you, it makes it a lot easier to objectify and keep it distant and, and not listen to it as much and yeah. know that he is trying to kill you. And that's why there's that. I mean, he, he metaphor again. That that's why you're hearing you know it, all these shitty things about yourself is because he wants you to hear it. So Heads on fire, yeah, the I like shades that. allow the sun to creep in, so I turn around. Um, Someone came to ask you right now, I'm saying. I guess that kind of is it. It's just remember that it's not you, it's separate from you, <laughs> and that it wants you dead. That's what I think, honestly, is the most important thing to tell people. It's just that it does want you dead. Um, I found out when I was in, you know, locked up in the crazy person plank that, um, that there's that depression actually has a 50% mortality rate because of how many suicides there are so That's it crazy. really does yeah so it, it really does want you dead it wants to kill you and um so just remember that and it will make it a lot easier to fight because you're literally in some cases you're fighting for your life you know i don't worry about trying to kill myself anymore because i've worked my way through that because um i didn't want to kill myself then right. i was just spontaneously self-destructive though because i hated myself <laughs> i've never actually wanted to die so i'm not really worried about me killing myself i'm just going to be sad and depressed for the rest of my life <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, so yeah, I would just tell people that. Just uh, make sure that you keep it in perspective and know that it's not you, it's separate from you and trying to kill you. My lady's cool, I can't stand it. She walks around here and she planned it. She takes it all off, I'll put it all on some baby. I will find it.